So in today's video, we're talking about Tyranny and Mutation, the second studio album by Blue Oyster Cult, released on February 11th, 1973, through Columbia Records, celebrating its 50th anniversary. So this is going to be more or less a, an express review, I guess I'll call it that. I'm going to keep this about like a five minute length. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this album and then the album that came before it, and afterwards, I'll talk about my favorite songs, then the songs I didn't like as much, and then I'll just talk about where would I rank this album. So, let's get into this really quick. So, this came right after uh, their self-titled debut album that came out on January 16, 1972. I actually also reviewed that, and you can find that on my channel. I felt that the first album had more memorable songs and songs that were... You know, played more often at, on, in a live setting. So, Cities on Flames with Rock and Roll, Stairway to the Stars, then came the last days of May. So, it was a great debut. And then the album that came after this was probably like one of their best called Secret Treaties. That one was released on April 5th, 1974. And that was also like when they started gaining popularity. Like, Secret Treaties, uh, you know, peaked at number 53 on the charts. But this album, Tyranny and Mutation, I feel like it kind of gets like lost a little bit. It only had like one single called Hot Rails to Hell. That, that one didn't even chart. But let me talk about my favorites. So my favorite is actually a deep cut called Wings Wetted Down. Why do I like this? It kind of sounds like Black Sabbath. You know, if you watch my first video, I talked about how, you know, they were really influenced by uh, Black Sabbath. And this one is like the most like metal song, or at least from this time period. But also has like a sort of folk music quality. It's interesting, different from the rest of the album, and I like the keyboard solo. Then my second favorite would be uh, Mistress of the Salmon Salt, like Quick Time Girl. This is like a deep purple type of uh, song. It's catchy. It has that like uh, cool chorus, you know, Quick Time Girl, something like that. Classic uh, Blue Oyster Cult sound with the organ section and really cool. Then they have another one called uh, The Red and the Black, which is a re-recording of a song from their first album about the Canadian Mounties. Um, Sorry. This version is a little faster, a little you know more upbeat. But it's uh, still pretty cool. You know, they uh, just uh, decided to re-record a song, and I, th and I thought this one sounded just as good. And the single Hot Rails to Hell, I thought it was good. It reminded me of a band like Kiss, who actually had not come out at this time. But it's like early 70s uh, hard rock. I'm, like I like the guitar sound. There's elements of early metal with that, like, chugging, uh, that, that type of, like, open, uh, palm-muted, open E string, that type of sound. And I, I enjoyed the song. And then another one with a weird title, Seven Screaming Diz Busters. Another one that's kind of like early speed metal, almost like Deep Purple. It's like classic rock with like fast playing rock guitars and softer uh, clean guitars, elements of psychedelic rock. It's a long song. The last part of the song is like this long jam session, like a psychedelic uh, rock kind of thing. So that one's really good. The rest of the songs, I would say weaker ones, but they're still okay. OD on Life itself, that's like that 12-bar blues, but has elements of like psychedelia, some keyboards that sound like the Doors, bass guitar, and it's a pretty decent song. Baby Ice Dog, another one that's more like a 70s funk rock and classic rock. Has some pretty cool like organ style playing, in the, like that 70s style. And Teen Archer, just straightforward rock and roll, classic Blue Oyster Cult. This nice guitar and bass sound. Now, where would I rank this album? Now, the thing with Blue Oyster Cult is like they have a really great debut. After this, it was Secret Treaties, Agents of Fortunes, and Spectres. Those are that was like their peak in the seventies. Afterwards, like Mirrors, Cult Source of Rexus, I like those albums. And then Fire of Unknown Origin, that's probably like one of their best. It's kinda of like a kind of like a comeback, I would call it. After that, I think their albums weren't that great until The Symbol Remains in 2020. So I think this would definitely be maybe like in the top seven. I feel like it gets lost out of all of the 70s albums. You know, the other ones do get a lot more attention. But it's definitely worth a listen. It's worth checking out. And I think it's a decent album. So, so check out this playlist of 2023 anniversary re reviews. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.